In this video, I will be showing you exactly what you may be missing in your trading strategy. We will be learning how to take full advantage of market structure. But first, I must give you some idea of what I mean by market structure. A stock moves in three main directions. Upward. Downward. Or sideways. A stock moving upwards creates a series of higher highs and higher lows, and can be referred to as the advancement stage. A stock moving downwards creates a series of lower highs and lower lows, and can be referred to as the decline stage. Sideways movement will look like this, as you may have expected. For simplicity, we will call this consolidation. The stage that a stock or future is in would be its market structure. Now let's start looking at a real example. I am going to go back into time on the S&P 500 to demonstrate some of the high-quality opportunities you could have taken. This chart is the S&P 500 on the weekly time frame. Right now, it is in the advancement stage. In this stage, it is very easy to be profitable just by buying near the lows. And you might be wondering how you would go about identifying where the stock is likely to bounce. Look at how the weekly chart is reacting and bouncing off the 20 exponential moving average. This means that it's maintaining its upward momentum. Whatever strategy you're using, you can use this fact as a way to identify potential bounce points. We can also use trend lines to gauge the health of a stock. Here is a trend line connecting through the most recent low points. If it closes below the trend line and moving average, it could keep going up, but this could also be the start of a transition into consolidation or the decline stage. Here is a big red candle closing below both the trend line and the 20 exponential moving average. Also, something to take note of is that we should now consider that the purple trend line could now act as a resistance. This is because when a support is broken it becomes resistance, and when a resistance is broken, it becomes support. Let's skip forward. Take a look at this bounce. Some people would see this bullish candle and expect the market to, to resume its uptrend. You have to be careful, because it would also make sense for the market to bounce away from here and head downwards. This could be a shorting opportunity. Just to make sure we are on the same page, I want to inform you that when you're shorting a stock, it pretty much means you're making money as it goes down from your entry. Let's pretend that we are looking to short this. First, we will go from the weekly time frame to the 4-hour time frame. Now we will draw a trend line connecting through as many of the current low points as we can up to the most recent bounce point. The idea here is that if we get a close below this line, that is a bearish sign, and you could take your short entry there. Also, make sure that you remember that the purple line is acting as a resistance. Let's skip forward to see what we get. We have a few candles that closed below the uptrending line that we drew. There are actually quite a few ways to play this. One of the ways to play this is taking your shorting entry on one of these candles. Another way is to wait for a close below the most recent bounce area. And finally, you could wait for a small move upwards to the red uptrending line and look for a shorting opportunity there since it could now act as resistance. Let's skip forward and see what we get. This is perfect. Look how the wick of this bearish candle got super close to the line. This can be considered a rejection of that line and would make sense as shorting entry. Another potential entry is right at the close of this candle because it closed below the most recent bounce point. Before we skip to the result, I want to show you how this looks on the weekly. Look at how there are two long upper wicks rejecting the purple line we have drawn and they both end at nearly the same point. This is a bearish candlestick pattern known as the tweezers top. So that just adds more to our bearish case. Now back to where we left off. Also, remember that we have three possible entries here. Let's skip forward to the result. All three entries would have worked just fine. My preferred entry would have been number two. Now let's skip forward in time on the weekly time frame to see if we can spot another high quality opportunity. Notice how the S&P 500 went up to the same level of the previous wicks we pointed out. It got rejected by it and continued going downwards. We can now see that this is the decline stage because of the lower highs and lower lows. So ideally, we should be looking for shorting opportunities since the overall momentum would be in our favor. Let's draw a new trend line to represent the direction of the current structure and it helps us estimate where the price will get rejected next. 
The next big shorting opportunity is likely to present itself once the price touches or gets close to that purple line. Let's skip forward. Okay, here it is. We will now zoom into the 4 hour time frame to take a closer look. Just like before, we will draw a trend line based on the price structure shown to us on this time frame. When it breaks the trend line, that give us a sign that the bullish structure displayed here is losing steam. Now remember, on the higher time frame, we are right at a major descending trend line. So the price losing steam at this purple line is pretty important. It does not mean that it will play out as we expect it to, but the probability is definitely in our favor. There is the break. As mentioned before, you can take an entry as it breaks the line, or you can wait for price to bounce up near the previous support line for a better shorting opportunity. Just be aware that there is no guarantee that the price will even bounce. So for a better entry, you risk missing out on the move and that is totally fine. It all depends on your style of trading. Let's skip forward. In this case, it does not look like it is going to reach the line and that is okay. We can zoom in further into an even lower time frame and repeat the same steps. This is the one hour time frame. I will draw a support line. Since I know that the context on the higher time frame is bearish, I will be taking a shorting entry once price closes below this current support line. Let's skip forward. That is a nice big candle. We can enter on this candle. It is now time to see the result. This was a very good trade. Let's go to the weekly time frame to see what this looks like on the weekly. As you can see, once price touched the purple line, it started going down further. So the thing I want you to remember is that if you want high quality trades, make sure that you are utilizing the higher time frames to identify trends and areas. I am confident that this will increase your success rate. I see so many traders ignoring market structure, and that is often part of the reason why they lose so many trades. So this is something that I felt was worth making a whole video on because I don't want people to end up repeating those same mistakes. No matter what time frame you're trading on, or what strategy you're using, please always keep track of the market structure on the higher time frames. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want any more resources, feel free to join my public Discord server or sign up for my course, which is all in the description. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. CYA in the next video.